Hey, what's up guys? It's Lucas and I'm here with a very interesting topic for you today. So I recently did a video talking about how VPNs can help protect you at work. And in general, if you guys have seen my other videos, then you know I am a big fan of using a VPN for personal use too. But someone brought up a really interesting question, which is this, are you still vulnerable to hackers when you use a VPN? Now, again, if you've watched this channel, then you've probably heard me say this before, there isn't really a foolproof, uh, all-in-one, perfect thing to protect your data. I mean, if there was, we would have heard about it, right? But VPNs are a great tool, and they play a really important role as part of your cybersecurity arsenal. And by using a VPN, you can significantly reduce the chances of cyber attacks, especially if you're using a public network like the Wi-Fi at your favorite coffee shop. That's because whenever you connect to an unprotected Wi-Fi without a VPN, you put yourself in a pretty vulnerable position. I mean, the moment your data goes from your computer to whatever website you're trying to access on the coffee shop Wi-Fi, it becomes basically up for grabs to any nefarious hacker who also happens to be buying a $6 Starbucks peppermint mocha at the same time. So a VPN is a great tool to protect you from hackers. And I wanna to talk to you about how it works as well as where a VPN might be vulnerable. Um, so that way you can pick the best VPN for your security needs. So let's get right into it. All right, first, how exactly does a VPN keep you safe from hackers? Well, so a VPN is built to encrypt your online traffic. A good VPN will route your data through a secure server on its way to whatever website um, that it's trying to visit. And this means that your computer is essentially operating in disguise and that potential hackers will only see your information as a stream of incomprehensible random crap, which is great. I mean, that's definitely what we want. Because even if a hacker decided to try to go through your encrypted data, they still wouldn't be able to find the important things. Uh, I'm talking about uh, usernames, passwords, personal emails, uh, photos, credit card details, or crypto wallet keys. So all in all, a VPN is a great way to keep your data safe and secure. But, and there's always a but, can a VPN be hacked? Well, while most VPN providers are pretty sound, there are plenty of instances of companies which fail to deliver on the promise of uncrackable encryption and watertight leak protection. And I'm just not talking about your random startup VPNs. Uh, I mean even tested, established VPNs with excellent encryption and open VPN protocols can be hacked. And this was something we found out from Edward Snowden who revealed that the NSA was using encryption techniques to capture encrypted traffic. So what exactly are some of the vulnerabilities that you might come across when you use a VPN? Let's go over the top five. First, there's the risk of uh, a VPN using older encryption programs. Now, most VPNs today don't use the old 128-bit ciphers, uh, but it does still happen occasionally. So it's always good to find a, a provider that clearly states that it uses 256-bit AES encryption, which is also known as military-grade encryption. And the next thing for you to keep in mind is the VPN protocols. So earlier I mentioned that when you use a VPN, your data gets disguised on its way to the website. Well, VPNs do this by wrapping your data in a secure tunnel, and if, for example, your data isn't wrapped up correctly, then hackers can unwrap your data and get through the disguise. This is something that can happen on VPNs that use older tech. So it's a good idea to look for VPNs that use more up-to-date protocols, known as open VPN-based protocols. So that's VPN protocols, and so far we've talked about things you can look for on a VPN sales page, but the next vulnerability might not be obvious to you as the user, and that's servers. So what do I mean by that? Well, all VPN data has to pass through banks of servers, and the servers are the kind of midway point where the VPN data is sent to uh, on its way to its destination. But what if these servers were compromised, and how would you know? Well, truth is you might not. And that's because some VPN providers rent uh, all of their servers and even outsource maintenance to third parties. Others rent servers but maintain them themselves. But the best ones will own all of their own infrastructure. So generally speaking, the VPN providers that own their infrastructure will be much more secure because they oversee their own servers. But the next point of vulnerability actually comes from the user side. So in this case, I'm talking about apps. For example, there are plenty of so-called security apps on platforms like Google Play. 
They lure users in with free versions of their software, but a bunch of them honestly have been flagged by Google as malware conduits. So it could pay to do your research when a security related software is offering something for nothing. And then last but not least, we have malware VPNs. So this is when a VPN company itself is the bad actor. I'm talking about everything from selling user data illegally to actively spreading malware. Now, this is super rare, but it could happen. So again, it pays to do your research when you choose the right VPN for you. Now, it is important to mention that all of these issues are really rare unless you happen to be caught up in some sort of deep state investigation, in which case, well, <laughs> I'm not sure how well this video would help. But for the average user, you just want to be able to pick the right VPN. And there are a bunch of great VPNs out there, so you can definitely find one that's best for you. Uh, but there is a lot that goes into researching VPNs. And uh, if that process sounds just a little bit overwhelming to you um, and you just want some direction, I do have a video on my top recommendations for cybersecurity products and uh, I include my top VPN pick in that video. So I'll leave a link to that in the description and feel free to check that out if you're looking for an idea of which VPN is gonna be best for you. But that's just my recommendation and it's always smart to do your own research. So if you guys wanna learn how to identify red flags for yourself, then just keep watching. So on that note, what are some red flags you can use to avoid the wrong VPN and choose the right one? Well, for example, be extra careful when you see a free VPN without premium versions um, or companies with big claims but no available contact details. Another thing to keep an eye out for would be any provider who appears overnight on the App Store. Bottom line is, if it seems too good to be true, it probably is. So if you pick a VPN based on up-to-date security, like military-grade encryption and open VPN-based protocols, then your VPN will become an essential and effective layer in your online security. Me, personally, I uh, honestly really like using uh, NordVPN, so if you wanna learn more about that, I do have a full review that I will link down in the description area below. But I would love to hear what you guys think. What's your favorite VPN to use? Um, and do you guys have any VPN horror stories? Uh, let me know down in the comments below. And as always, if you guys found this helpful, please leave a thumbs up as that always makes my day. And if you're a new subscriber, welcome to our cyber family. Be sure and let me know down in the comments what topics you would like me to cover next. All right, I really appreciate you guys watching and I'm excited to hear what you guys think down in the comments.